Hi. Hi. Say hi to the internet and tell them who you are. Hi. I'm uh, Dave Kennedy. I, uh, I'm a Chief Information Security Officer for a Fortune 1000 company, but uh, I write the Social Engineer Toolkit. I'm author of uh, Metasploit, the Penetration Testers Guide, mm -hmm. and um, uh, basically I'm a penetration tester and exploit writer. And you have your own con. I have my own con. I have my own uh, security conference first year, uh, DerbyCon. Yep. We have a huge speaker uh, list, and, and really it's uh, all about having fun and getting together and networking uh, in the security community. So. Where and when? It's in Louisville, Kentucky, September 30th to October 2nd of uh, this year. So. Oh, so it's coming up soon. It's coming up in about a month, uh, month and a half or so. I heard you're sold out already. Uh, we're close to it. Um, you know, first year conference, uh, we didn't expect this this wide of a turnout, but uh, I mean, we had an exponential amount of turnouts and numbers, and so. I mean, this is the first year you've done it. First year. And already you're doing that well. Yep. It's been awesome. Well, you know, I, I can't take all credit for it. I mean, our speaker list is just insane, I and mean, we have pretty much everybody in the security industry coming to it. So. Okay. It's gonna cool. It's going to be great. It's going to be. Sounds great. Yep. Thank nice. You. So what are we going to talk about today to help the average user? Well, I think, uh, you know, one of the, the alarming questions out there is what are the three most uh, typical type of attack vectors that are out there today and, and what you should be aware of from, from a user perspective? And so, you know, the things that I, I generally look at um, as an attacker, because we do attacks on organizations on a regular time, we target a lot of the user populations. Are, uh, uh, one of my most favorite ones is, is the phishing attack type uh, type attack factor. So trying to coax a user into uh, clicking on something or you know through an email or a malicious website. And um, you know even if their systems are completely patched and up to date, you know there's still ways of infecting their machines and their computers in order to actually get them and attack them. Um, and easy ways of bypassing antivirus and, and you know certain things like that that you know you rely heavily off of as a protection mechanism and so for, for, for me one of the easiest ways to get into an organization is targeting the user uh, so sending an email that has an attached PDF to it um, or might have something that's infected within that PDF so when they open up the PDF it hacks their machine and then I can actually interface with the machine and start connecting back to it uh, so those are one of the, the larger easier ones to, to do at least right now okay and no matter how much I patch and stuff, I still have to be aware that if it almost seems to be good to, could, too good to be true, or if I have doubt, there is no doubt. That's absolutely right. Because you know, your, your email is probably going to pretend to be something that I know. You know, we, we've come into a, a society where we're, we're the click society. You know, we, we get an email, we open it up, we double click on the attachment, see what it is, and then we process it within a couple of seconds, we close it down, and we're good to go. You know, it's something that I need to pay attention to or something I need to move on for. And um, unfortunately, that type of, of mentality has really hurt us because um, you really see a lot of these attacks that happen. And I mean, if you look at um, RSA, which was a very large security company uh, that got breached, the lady actually, or the individual that, that got hacked and the main, made the whole company uh, completely compromised, she actually went into her junk mail, found one that, that was in there, un, you know, unjunk mailed it, then opened it up and then compromised her system, and then fully compromised the rest of the entire organization. So, you know, it's, it's you know, we are the weakest link right now as far as yeah. humans go. I mean, social engineering attacks are, are by far the, the largest ones out there today. So it's and and I think we can tell them it's okay to feel a little bit suspicious and to act on that and sure. you're not having bad manners Absolutely and it's going to be okay. Request some more information. Yep. I mean if you know if you don't um, you know think it's legitimate in nature, you know you know, contact that person and see if it was legitimate nature. I mean, we have at our company, we're, we're a Fortune 1000 company. Uh, we say often challenge, you know, that person. You know, respond back and make sure it's not spam or it's not something that's a phishing attack. And we get emails all the time, you know, basically saying, "Hey, is this legitimate?" And oftentimes it is. But you know, it's fine for us. You know, we we'd rather see that yep. than not see anything at all. And then we have the one weakest link that gets compromised, and all of a sudden the rest of our organization is attacked. And the human's always going to be the weak weakest link, isn't it? Always going to be the weakest link. I mean, if you look, you know, traditionally speaking, social engineering was was very big in the 80s and 90s and then you know technology started to be in the front for attack and so you had the firewalls that came out to protect you against the, the network attacks like the slammer viruses that hit us in you know the early 2000s and then you saw web applications were you know the largest attack and, and you see companies you know that that provide more and more information on their websites and they were a big focus of attack and you're seeing the evolution turn right back to social engineering again and right back to the human because it is our weakest link I mean we've put all this you know millions and billions of dollars into technology and protecting ourselves from the viruses and you know the web applications attacks and you know the firewalls and everything when we can just call somebody up on the phone yep. and you know coax them into doing something that we want them to do ego that's it ego is gonna bring everyone down absolutely right and especially I mean if you can tout to someone's per that person's ego like you know one of the the main techniques that I like to use um, yeah is I'll call an organization and I'll spoof my phone number so it makes it look like I'm coming from an internal number Ooh. and and I'll go to the person and I'll claim to be someone of responsibility so I'll do a lot of um, internet reconnaissance uh, which is in the social engineering world is called you know pretexting which is basically building our attack 
and I'll look for somebody of authority, like a VP or you know someone has some sort of authoritative figure. And I'll call somebody up lowly on the totem pole in the, in the organization. I'll spoof my phone number from from either that person's um, phone number or for someone in the company, and I'll call them up and I'll I'll do a technique that's called anchoring. And anchoring is basically. I'm going to call that person and plant an anchor. So, for example, hey, I'm so and so a VP. Automatically, you establish rapport from that person. You're a person of importance, and you say, okay, hey, I'm, I'm in a really big bind. I really need your help. And all of a sudden, you've planted your anchor. That person knows that you're in a situation where you need their help, and you're a person of authority. And then you pull the anchor and you say, can you help me? And that that 99.9% of the time is going to work. That much? 99.9% of the time will work. Almost all, all the time. Because it's the ego thing. They want to be the shining star for their they VP. They want to be a shining star. And then you can you can throw things in there like, you know, um, if you can help me, I'd be so appreciative. I'm really in a bind. I'll tell your manager that you did an awesome job. Boom. Yeah. You know, they're hook, line, sinker into, into doing anything that you want them to do. So you can get them to go to any website that they want to. You can get them to download any PDF you want to. And really, that's what we're seeing as far as the attacks go is really on the human element. And that's where... It's the most important for a security organization or for a company that's that's trying to, you know, elevate their security posture is really around user awareness of, of, of taking those users and educating them around different things to look for. And, and don't be afraid to challenge somebody of authority. Say, are you sure this is, you know, so-and-so, do you mind if I call you back on your line? I'm going to look you up in the directory, you know, or I can call you on your cell phone, which I also have here in this directory. You know, different response challenges that you can do to actually protect against these types of attacks. Yep. And I don't think, too, that you have to worry only about the really elite guys coming at you because now Mary, who got mad at you at the soccer game, can come back to you because the tools are available for her. Absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, it just, you know, the, the simplicity and ease of these things are, are, are really getting, um, you know, quite alarming when it comes to that, for sure. And, I mean, that's one of the, the conundrums that we have in the, as becoming security researchers are, you know, do we actually publicize everything that we're doing to make a greater good? And that's a huge, you know, it's a huge debate of responsible disclosure versus full disclosure versus everything else. And so if you look at things like, um, I find a new exploit, you know, I, what I do is I contact the manufacturer, make sure that the, the systems are patched and everything, and then I'll, I'll disclose it after that. Okay. Uh, but same thing goes for, for tools that I use. I mean, obviously I write um, the social engineer toolkit, which is a tool that you can actually use for bad guys to compromise systems and hack stuff. But my philosophy behind it is I'm giving it out to the good people. The majority of the people I'm targeting are white hat hackers that do penetration testing for companies that actually fix them so they use it to, to, to you know build their, up their user awareness build up their organization so that they can protect against those attacks and it's stuff that's already being actively exploited in the wild so you know it's, it's always a trade-off of do you release stuff like that make it easy uh, because the black cats can definitely use it as well so yeah you can only do so much that's right yep um, I feel like you're really eloquent. You haven't said like um or ah or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've, 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 luckily, I've been able to talk a lot, but uh, you know, <laughs> that's good. I, good, I haven't gone on that um 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 um, um side uh. of that. <laughs> now you got me started. I'm gonna be um. <laughs> <laughs> I jinxed you. <laughs> uh, you wrote a book too, didn't you? I did. Yes. Um, this is a new book out uh, through No Search Press, so nostarch.com. It's called Metasploit, the Penetration Testers Guide. And uh, for those that aren't familiar, Metasploit is a uh, it's an exploitation framework for penetration testers. So basically, you can launch up this framework and do exploit development. You can do hacking and stuff like that through it. And so a bunch of buddies of mine, uh, we got together and basically wrote a book on the Metasploit framework, and it just got released about two weeks ago. And, oh, uh, recently? Yeah, so it's number one in all the computer security books right now, and uh, it's number, uh, as of today, it's like number 670 on the Amazon bestseller, so it's going really good right now, uh, so I'm very blessed on uh, everything that's been going on. So, But uh, it's a great book. It really teaches you um, the fundamentals around penetration testing, uh, so it establishes you, you know, if you don't know anything about it, to read through penetration testing and then gradually build yourself up as an expert in penetration testing penetration testing, leveraging the Metasploit framework. Oh, so even I could use it as a, Absolutely. a newbie? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Read through it, it'll teach you how, um, you know, it is, you know the, the biggest things that, you talk to like H.D. Moore, who's like the, the creator of Metasploit, um, you know, what, the first thing he'll tell you is, you know, the, the, the number one most, you know, interesting question that I get all the time is, how do I hack a machine? You know, that, that's, that's a hurdle for people that don't understand, you know, penetration testing and how to exploit it. And so, what we try to do is basically establish a fundamental methodology around hacking or penetration testing. So, you know, you know, how do you gain information from a system to find out what it's running so that you can actually attack it? And then from there, why do you, how do you actually hack it? And then from there, where do you go from there? And, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so it actually builds you up. And so we actually have uh, <coughs> in one of the appendixes, um, it shows you how to build your own vulnerable environment. So you can actually go through 
the scenarios and use the exact same you know commands that we're using um, throughout the whole book. So you can actually simulate the whole thing that you're doing, Ooh. learn from from actual example. Which is always way better. It's always way better to learn it that way versus actually you know just trying to retain it up in here. That never sticks in your head that way. It doesn't. You gotta no. do muscle memory. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Practice makes permanent. That's right. Yep. You're awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for Thanks. having me. Say bye to the internet. See ya. Bye. Nice meeting you. <laughs>